Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization. Today is March 9th, 2021, and this is your daily update. I want to begin by talking about what is emerging as Biden's economic plan. And it's as bad as we had expected. It's based on the idea that the Green New Deal is the way of the future, that we have to move the U.S. economy away from so-called carbon footprints, which means cutting back on production, cutting back on energy that's efficient and reliable, such as fossil fuels, uh, coal, and nuclear, and moving towards so-called sustainable energy, which is not uh, reliable or efficient, as we saw in the recent Texas deep freeze. Uh, equally important is the commitment of the administration through the economic team to joining the Great Reset uh, put forward by the Davos billionaire crowd, which is essentially the city of London, Wall Street, Silicon Valley, the European Union, where they're trying to move away from governments investing money for the benefit of the population and instead putting the power to spend and to create credit completely into the hands of speculators who will work through the central banks to ensure that the money will flow into the increasingly worthless speculative bubble to keep it afloat. And in the process, just increasing the total debt on a declining physical economy. Now keep in mind, it, it took uh, three, four, five months to pass the most recent COVID relief measure where uh, the President Trump had put it forward in, in September and October, calling for $2,000 per person. It got winnowed down, it was only 600, now it's going to be another 1,400, but that's $2,000 for about eight months. Uh, this is not going to help people very much. In the meantime, trillions of dollars is going to the speculators. Now, what form is this taking? Well, a, a top official from BlackRock uh, said the other day that they're talking about 30 to 40 trillion dollars which will be available for investment so-called if you add in the federal the, the money from central banks <clears throat> combined with the the uh, private sector the equity funds and so on BlackRock of course is the world's largest equity fund but they're saying 30 to 40 trillion dollars for what for carbon bubble the carbon bonds and offsets, windmills, solar panels, uh, retrofitting, but nothing for improving the physical economy. And as we saw in Texas, windmills are not reliable. As we know, if you move into a situation where everybody's driving an e-car, an electric car, there are not enough charging stations. The batteries and the charging stations themselves take up an enormous bill of materials that adds to the, the waste in, in the environment and the tearing up of the ground much worse. So the whole argument for moving into this area is a fraud. It's largely a commitment to bailing out a bankrupt system. Now, we have a better idea. And this is the idea of the LaRouche movement using the principles developed by Lyndon LaRouche over his many years. LaRouche has been the author of volumes on economics. He's developed key concepts, such as the idea of energy flux density as being a driver of an economy, the, the ability to increase the potential relative population density uh, being a means of measuring whether an economic process is good or not. Not GDP, which can be inflated with funny money, but real physical goods production, and more importantly, increasing the rate of productivity gains through advances in science and technology. Now, LaRouche's ideas were applied last uh, spring when we wrote a report called How to Restart the U.S. Economy. The world needs 1.5 billion new productive jobs, including 50 million in the United States. What is it we wrote about? Well, what's necessary? We need energy, real energy, constantly improving 
the efficiency of energy production, electricity production, meaning not going back to feudal technologies like wind and solar, but to the, the most advanced uh, technologies, including the development of nuclear fusion. Uh, we need fresh water. For water, you need a lot of electricity if you're going to desalinate. We need efficient transportation, uh, which we don't have in the United States. And in Europe, the transportation systems are breaking down. We need decent housing. There's not enough adequate housing. Uh, and we need modern health care systems and quality education. That requires investment. It requires investment, which is not there because the neoliberal austerity idea is that government spending is a drag on the private sector economy. But what's the private sector economy right now? It's on the one side, global cartels that don't give a damn about whether there's a job in the United States or in, in France. They're just concerned with the quick turnaround of income. And that's why we have the outsourcing going on. That's what the so-called free trade agreements are. And that's what's just led to the deindustrialization of the most advanced economies in the West. So if you don't address that and don't reverse that, you're not going to have economic development. If you put your money into so-called sustainable energy production, what you're doing is essentially draining money away from necessary physical goods production. Now, furthermore, we don't need neoliberal austerity managers to handle the budget. This is what the Great Reset is proposing, that in addition to determining credit and currency, the central banks will also determine spending policy. In other words, governments, elected officials in, in uh, Congresses or parliaments, will have that power taken away from them and handed to technocrats who will figure out how to make the greatest short-term gains in GDP without spending money. And how do you do that? Well, you channel it into the stock bubble, channel it into bond bubbles, channel it into derivative speculation and trading. And so you have this situation where we have zombie corporations. Now, you know what a zombie corporation is? It's a company that doesn't make enough uh, profit to pay the income on its debt and has to borrow large amounts of money to roll over that debt for the purpose of increasing its stock valuation. This was the same kind of problem we had with the Trump tax cut. The idea of an investment tax credit would have been a good idea but that's not what we got. We got a tax cut with the idea that corporations would be allowed to bring back their money from overseas without paying taxes on it. And what did they do with it? They bought their own stocks. They invested in uh, speculation, new financial instruments. This is what the whole financialization process has been over the last 40 years. And what's the result? Massive increases in debt and decline in physical product and production. So we don't need bailouts. We need investment. We need credit going into physical goods production. And we certainly don't need more wars. Because if you think about it, the money that goes into the defense budget, which is over $700 billion a year in the United States, that produces some jobs. It produces some income for what? for wars, which actually are a drain on the overall economy. Building new weapon systems, while it may appeal to the people of Raytheon, and by the way, the new Secretary of Defense is from Raytheon, the, the board of Raytheon, may appeal to those people because it'll increase their shareholder value. But it means more dead American soldiers, more people killed in other countries, more destruction of nations, more refugees, and more anger directed against the United States. And why are we doing this? Because the United States is still functioning to some extent as a dumb giant on a British leash. That is, the Brits are deploying us. Just think back to the role Thatcher had convincing George Bush Sr. to go into Iraq. The role Blair played in convincing George W. Bush, who already was convinced of it, but to go into Iraq and giving him the so-called evidence on weapons of mass destruction. Cameron's role with Sarkozy 
Sarkozy, who may be heading to prison, in working with Hillary Clinton to destroy Libya. Biden's role, working with George Soros and, and neocons to overthrow the government of Ukraine, the deployment into Syria, the continued wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Where does that produce revenue? Where does that produce goodwill? All it does is produce more terrorists and more insecurity. So it looks as though the Biden administration is going in all the wrong directions of its predecessors, Bush and Obama in particular. Now that's why we're gonna have a conference. The Schiller Institute will be sponsoring a conference March 20th and 21st online titled World at a Crossroad, two months into the new US administration. Go to the theschillerinstitute.com to register for the conference. I think it's extremely important that people take part in this, uh, see it as a moment to not just get the facts, but get involved. And then at the same time, order a copy of the report that we produce on the world needs 1.5 billion new productive jobs. So thanks for joining me today, and I'll be back again tomorrow.